but uh, how are we going to know whether we're having the kind of impact that we seek? Uh, one of the recommendations in the task force report that I didn't cite was uh, the need to fully assess the programs that we put in place, and that's going to require some some research, and we're going to bring in uh, research and assessment folks to help us with that. It certainly is, uh, is our belief that the number of uh, reported misconduct cases in this arena shouldn't continue to rise. If it continues to rise, we have a different kind of problem, and it's evident that we're not having the success that we, we seek. So we're determined to turn that around as soon as we can. I think this climate survey is going to be very, very important. Uh, because it should show us something about what student attitudes are about this issue now. <clears throat> I would hope that over time, and we will do that survey regularly, uh, periodically, over time we would also see some change in attitudes about this issue, uh, and, and I think that that should be uh, reflective of some success that we're having. And then I really do hope, the last thing I'd say is that this, uh, this initiative, uh, the, the uh, bystander intervention initiative where we bring the full community uh, into uh, acting in, in these circumstances, I think that's going to show some real uh, fruit early on and I think we're going to track uh, the evidence that that's having some success. The fact of the matter is this is a problem, as, as are many of the problems that we deal with in student life that, that happen. Uh, in the wee hours of the morning, in the private uh, space in, in students' lives. Uh, we're not there to uh, supervise, to intervene, uh, but in, in many instances, others are there to intervene, uh, and we want to give them the, the tools to do so effectively and appropriately and to communicate to our full university community that we all have an obligation to act in that way. So if the sum of that doesn't produce in a relatively short time some evidence that we're actually reducing the number of misconduct cases, I would be deeply disappointed and feel that we have not done the job that we were assigned. Yeah, Rick. David, you mentioned the um, association between alcohol abuse and instances of sexual misconduct. Has the task force come up with any ideas as to how to um, reduce abuse of alcohol on campus? Well, the, the good news, I suppose, which may all, oh yes, thank you, Mark. Uh, the question is, uh, there's a linkage between alcohol and sexual misuse that I've uh, cited, and did the task force do anything to come up with some new uh, suggestions about intervention with regard to the alcohol problem? You know, the truth is that we've been engaged in the alcohol problem around here uh, since the beginning of time, probably. It, it comes with the territory. Uh, I can also say that the, the last time I made a presentation like this before the full board, it dealt with the alcohol issue. We launched uh, a number of years ago about 42 separate initiatives designed to address that issue, and I think that we've, we've seen some evidence over time that we're having some success with that. <clears throat> it is pleasing, though, as I said, that, that we are now able to talk openly about this connection between the misuse of alcohol and sexual abuse. And students, again, must be the ones who really are talking about that and taking responsibility for it in their living arrangements, in their personal lives, and understanding that unavoidably uh, problems with one may lead to problems with the other. So I think that um, we have a lot of things in place. We want to amplify the message uh, as we can about those linkages and try to encourage uh, as much responsibility uh, for individuals and for others as we possibly can on both of these issues, and we think we'll see success with both if we do it that way. Yeah. I, I've always been struck by the fact that we offer the opportunity for students to <coughs> come to Penn State, but it seems as if there must be some difficulties legally to dismiss them. That, uh, you know, it seems in other schools they seem to have great difficulty in being able to get rid of that person. And I don't quite grasp why it, can you just in 15 seconds tell us what the legal implications are about saying, sorry Joe, we don't want you around here anymore. Yeah, the question is, why can we not be a little more uh, summarily dismissive of students who behave badly? And uh, can I explain that in 15 seconds? The answer to that question is no. Um, I, I should say, though, that, uh, you know, that there is a fundamental philosophical 
uh, notion here that's important. And, and you and others may tell us that we ought to disabuse ourselves of this. What we think of in our discipline system is that our task is largely to try to change behavior and to improve people. It's part of what this institution is about. So a lot of young people come to us and I don't think they're yet fully formed and they do make mistakes and they make bad choices and some of them have profound consequences both for them and unfortunately for many others including the institutional reputation. Uh, but I think we have to remain committed to our discipline processes focus on education as opposed to punishment and so I hope we will sustain that commitment. We, we, we may give uh, too many opportunities and we have to, to look at that. Uh, but our, our aim is really to improve outcomes for these folks and give them a better chance in life to be as successful as we know they can be. If they've been admitted here, they can be successful. We don't have any opportunity to influence them once they've been thrown out. We can influence them as long as they remain connected to us in some way. And so we've been hesitant to dismiss people. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, thanks. Um, Rick brought up the point of what goes on on campus, but clearly a lot of this goes on off campus, off the physical campus. How do you coordinate with the state college police in a preventative way? Well, we have very close relations with, the, I'm sorry to repeat the question. Um, <clears throat> the, the question is how do we coordinate with the state college police to deal with all the off-campus behavior that is problematic in this arena too? Uh, you're right, a great deal of it does occur off-campus and uh, we coordinate with multiple parties to try to address that. Our relationship with the state college police really is as strong as, as any I know in terms of you know, town and gown relationships and, the, and uh, the relationship between an institution like ours and the police. I talk regularly myself with uh, the chief of the State College Police and the leadership of State College about these issues. Uh, Tom Fontaine, who's the borough manager uh, and is the person to whom the chief of police reports, he and I co-chair a, a group called the Partnership on Dangerous Drinking uh, and that is a town and gown initiative. About 40 people are members of that and we are focused entirely on how we can collectively address these issues wherever they happen to be. Is that it? <laughs>